Hello and welcome to Half Time Report. I'm Ikta Batra and with me is Sonal Bhutra. Well, it's turning out to be a session where we are seeing some amount of upside and strength because of the US market close. But remember that we have a big event uh, ahead of us, which is the US Fed FOMC meet. So let's see what that actually throws up. But separately for our markets, it's a lot of, uh, about earnings and in terms of earning reactions, a couple stand out. For example, Maruti as well as Dr. Reddy's from the frontliners. So a lot of volatility on an intraday basis that you're seeing for stocks such as uh, Dr. Reddy. So that one should come up for you down around 2.2% now after what was a start in the green. And separately from the broader markets, a lot of other stocks in focus, for example, Bandhan Bank, which seemed to be quite a disappointment this quarter. And even something like a Gland Pharma, which continues to see deceleration on the downside. So Bandhan Bank down around 10 odd percent at this point in time. And we have Gland Pharma, which is now off the low point of the day, but uh, it's a fresh 52-week low for that particular stock as well. Hi, Sona. Hey, Ikta, such big moves, right, uh, on earnings. Gland Pharma is something that has lost almost 20% in the last couple of days. Uh, but of course, on the Nifty, we are watching out for that 18,000 mark. We've not been able to uh, get that through the course of the day. But yes, just shy of that 18,000 mark on the Nifty at the day's high as we speak. But that is all about the secondary market. We will speak about an, an entrant into the secondary markets now. DCX Systems 500 crore IPO has opened today for subscription. IPO's retail proportion has been subscribed 1.83 times till 11.30 a.m. Shankara Krishnan Ramalingam, the whole time director of the company, is joining us now to discuss the business outlook, explain the business and a lot more. Mr. Ramalingam, good, mo good afternoon. Thanks a lot for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Well, I was looking at the profile and you are actually a contract manufacturer of electronic subsystems and cable harnesses and you have clients like Bharat Electronics, you have um, uh, supplies to Israeli companies as well. Uh, so whole host of clients that you cater to. I was looking at uh, your uh, uh, reasons why you are raising this money and some of it is to pay debt as well. How much of a debt will you be able to pay off with this and what is the remaining debt or will you be debt free? Uh, we wouldn't be actually. Uh, basically as of FI22, I have about 467 crores of short-term borrowings in my balance sheet. Out of which, uh, out of the 400 crores that I'm taking into the primary for the company, we are repaying about 110 crores towards the banking system, thus bringing down the leverage from about 4.52 in 2020 to after this repayment to about 2%, paving way for a much leveraging uh, and addressing larger working capital enablement and uh, better business management to happen, which is what this repayment of uh, money will do. And uh, there is enough uh, cash flows that's accruing into the balance sheet. So obviously the leverage will go down further and uh, there will be a lot of uh, watches that will get built up within the system itself is going forward is what we believe in. Okay. Um, so hi, thank you very much for joining in. Uh, if you could just explain to us how much of your revenue do you get from say the Indian market which is basically supplying to the Ministry of Defence and how much of it is direct and how much of it is via contract manufacturing? Uh, to be very frank with you, actually, we are actually working in special economic zone in the special aerospace and uh, defense park. We are a 100% export-oriented company, per se. We are the largest defense offset obligation company for the largest government of Israel-owned company called Israeli Aerospace Industries Limited. And uh, as, a, as, a, as a defense... Uh, um, uh, Indian partner, Indian offset partner for uh, defense obligations on the government to government contracts. Our business model is completely unique. We are an export oriented company and we happen to be in aerospace and defense. We don't have as on date any supplies on the existing business verticals to Ministry of Defense at all, except for the licensing portion and uh, the various clearances that we take from MOD India, MOD Israel, etc. We don't have any commercial dealings with the uh, government of India at all. We only cater to government-to-government -to -government contracts for the Israeli company so far. Oh. And we have grown the uh, aggregation of business from about 449 crores in 2020 to go up to about 1,102 crores in FI22. Oh. Going forward, obviously, we have a very clear plan of the existing cable and wire harness expanding, system integration business going into other uh, geographies, etc. And also, we are getting into a backward integration on EMS PCB assembly hmm. and our getting into the embargo products on uh, uh, getting transfer of technology and product game. Mr. That is the type of integration where we will get into MOD. Thank okay. you. 
Okay, mm -hmm. got it. So that will happen over years where you will be supplying to MOD as well. Yes. Uh, Mr. Ramalingam just wanted to confirm 100% of your revenues are coming in from exports is what you meant. Yes. Okay. And so domestic sales also is comprising of exports only. We don't have rupee dealings at all. Mm -hmm. All our imports, all our exports, only a classification between direct exports and uh, supply to domestic company like Bharat Electronics is we, de <coughs> we call the domestic supply as deemed exports. Okay. Your margins seem to be quite volatile um, and the, you know, maybe on a sustainable basis, X of COVID, it's probably between 9 to 10 percent and correct me if I'm wrong there. But uh, what is a sustain sustainable level in terms of margins that you can guide investors to? Uh, probably till about FI21, we were uh, largely concentrated on uh, that MR sum program for the IOP customer, uh, OEM customer in Israel. And uh, we were at about... Uh, anywhere between three and a half to five percent kind of uh, EBITDA margins at that point in time. FY21 to 22 it has been a very significant year in the history of uh, DCX where we have been able to add the largest public sector undertaking company called Baris Electronics Limited, <coughs> uh, which has contributed about 23 percent of the earnings in uh, FY22. And uh, we have also brought down the single concentration from OEM customer to about 90 percent to somewhere around about 55 percent or so. Then from the OEM customer, we have been able to bag on the team, uh, uh, seamless delivery and supply chain mechanism and the technology that we have adopted. A lot of engineering services getting added to five more new projects with better margins. FY22 would be the most ideal year in which all the last three years of plan has really come into place. Hmm. And that probably become the base oh. for the future years to come. Oh. And now with backward integration and forward integration, into more uh, better margin oriented areas like EMS and product game, etc. I see the consolidation of margins uh, happening and uh, moving forward. So you are maintaining that margins will be around 10% of upwards from here on. Uh, and also, what about your revenue growth? You have clocked revenue CAGR of 57% in the last three years. That's quite impressive. Will you be able to continue that and also give us the margin guidance? Is it 10% and above? Uh, I think uh, I will answer it in two ways. I, I don't know how much of it that I can talk openly on a, when the issue is open. I'm constrained by the RHP and uh, those kind of guidelines. And uh, as very seasoned uh, anchors, you are aware of all those kind of uh, restrictions. Uh, what I can broadly say is, uh, of course, the margin would continue to expand from the FI22 levels with more business verticals getting added into the company, number one. And uh, number two, in terms of... Uh, uh, the business visibility, I think right now we are sitting on 2,600 crores of confirmed order book on hand, uh, which is to be executed in the next two years. Auguring well for a, a consistent high CAGR growth is what I can probably say. And since we have been growing very rapidly at a CAGR of 57%, we have reached a threshold of uh, 1,102 crores as a higher base for FI22. And uh, in terms of percentage, we may not be able to maintain that same percentage growth. But in terms of quantum and a higher CAGR growth, based on the existing order visibility and the opportunity that we are sitting on, definitely yes. This will be a comprehensive 360 degree business model, catering to end-to-end -end capabilities of our global OEM with uh, very matured business models attached to it, with mm -hmm. huge potential, both in terms of aggregation of top line, as well as the growth growing of the EBITDA margin. That's the way I would like to categorize it. Okay, all right, uh, Mr. Ramlingam, we're going to touch base with you once you do list, so we can get more numbers and forward-looking statements for you from you. Please thanks, uh, thanks, thanks yeah, very yeah. much for joining in and speaking with us. So that's DCX Systems. The IPO opens on the 31st, which is today, up till the 2nd of November. They're looking for a fresh issue of around 400 odd crores and an offer for sale of around. Odd crores. It seems as though the IPO market as a whole is picking up now, considering that we do have Medanta, which is going to be hitting the market soon enough as well. Uh, need to take a short break, but up next, Dwarake Sugar Industries is going to be joining in to discuss their Q2 performance. Stay tuned.